Hi, my name is Veronica Armour, and I'm presenting here today on the Living Donor Design Lab, Collaboration, Innovation, and Social Change. I have three co-presenters that I'd like to introduce to you today. Their names are Sunita Kramer, who is the AVP for Research and Experiential Education in the Office of Academic Affairs here at Rutgers, and also the Executive Director for IDEA. Mary Chaco, Interdisciplinary Teaching Professor at the School of Communication and Information and Teaching Fellow at the Honors College and Dr. Advait Bangu, a general surgeon at Robert Wood Johnson Hospital. Uh, so you might be thinking, well, what is a design lab? A design lab is a three hour workshop designed by um, Sunita Kramer for design thinking to follow a framework for finding solutions to complex, ch complex challenges. We follow the process of empathize, define, ideating, prototyping, and testing if you're familiar with the D schools framework. And then we also think of a design lab as also as a laboratory, a place for experimental study and testing ideas and having fun. And so putting these together, we have created a, a virtual space for students to think about uh, challenges they want to address, problems they want to solve in having it be a place where they can try things out, um, find what works, what doesn't work, and go through an iterative process to think about these things. Um, our, our online space is our virtual hatchery. So as part of the Innovation Design and Entrepreneurship Academy, which is what Sunita Kramer and I are involved in, we are creating a space to bring people together for a shared experience, a community to spend some time thinking about problems and generating solutions. There will be an in-person space and we are all back on campus in Alexander Library, but during the pandemic, we had to pivot to finding a virtual space for us to continue doing this. And through a combination of different mediums, such as Slack, Zoom, and online tools like Miro, we've been able to, to generate this experience where people can come together. Within each design lab, we have intentional diversity of teams looking at who is coming to the coming to the workshop and what, what their majors are, what year they are in their program, whether they are undergraduate, graduate, interest levels and skill sets to put them together so that we have strong teams that can pull on the strengths of each person in there. And then given that this is design lab and following the uh, design thinking process, we select design methods specific to the topic and ability that they can be um, um, applied in a virtual space for doing that. Um, this, as uh, from in a design perspective, instructional design perspective, we are very intentional also with our design of the space, and we use something called a playbook to go through the timing and um, um, and methods throughout the whole thing. This session will take you very quickly through our playbook and talk about what we did during this session. And without further ado, I'd like to actually tran uh, transition us from the start of how we got into doing this with introducing Advaith and Mary so they can tell us about how this topic came about. Once they tell us about how this topic came about and what they wanna present, we'll then turn the um, presentation over to Sunita who will take us through the actual process of the design lab that we have done. So Advaith and Mary. Thanks Veronica for that introduction. Uh, I don't see the slides up. Uh, can we just put those slides up? Um. So can everybody share my see my screen or uh, maybe I can put it up on mine. And are my so I'm showing that I'm sharing screen. I'll stop sharing and try again. Okay. How's this? Yes. Okay. Sorry. About I didn't realize my screens were being shared. I couldn't see the chat. Uh, so, you know, the uh, just a little bit about uh, how this came about. Um, you know, the the challenge that we have in the field of organ transplantation is is really, you know, put simply, is that there's a supply and demand mismatch. Uh, Eight thousand or so annually will either die on the wait list or are too sick to be transplanted. And what we know is for those patients with end-stage renal disease, uh, living donation provides the best pathway uh, to transplantation and off dialysis. <clears throat> the problem is that not everybody has a potential living donor or knows how to go about self-advocating. Now, anecdotally, there has been success with using social media to find donors. And I had approached uh, Dr. Chaco, given her area of expertise, to, to further explore this idea. 
And um, we know that social media is really critical to efforts like this, to get the word out, to amplify a message, you know, across many networks. And so Advaith and I discussed, you know, different ways that this might possibly be, um, that social media might be used in order to really um, amplify this message, get it out as efficiently and widely as possible. Um, we talked about how, you know, doing so can really facilitate the creation of community and relationships and, you know, networks which can ideally bring, you know, organ donors and patients together. Um, and how opportunities, resources, and social support can be exchanged in these networks. So social media is really a perfect um, sort of partner to this task, to the idea of finding ways to really get the word out you know, as far and wide as possible. It's a very powerful way. And we also know that students know a lot about how to use social media. And we're also teaching them how to do so better each day at the School of Communication and Information. So the idea was that by bringing students into this process and helping them um, through a design lab, really talk about how to um, creatively implement and leverage the use of social media uh, to be able to, to meet our goals and, um, and to bring new audiences to this work, to find ways to really um, spread the word um, so that we can um, hopefully you know, find success in matching donors and patients. So we uh, spoke with students at this design lab, helping them to be as creative and pos positive throughout the process as possible and to have fun. And so let me turn over to Sunita Kramer uh, to talk a little bit more about the design format and the process. Yeah, thanks, Mary. So, you know, Mary came to me and said, um, I have this really great idea. I just spoke with uh, um, this uh, surgeon who wants to work with students and has, um, has some thoughts about um, connecting with them and starting a project. And uh, at the time, uh, Veronica and I were building this uh, new program called IDEA for Innovation Design and Entrepreneurship Academy, and this turned out to be a really great fit. And we use design thinking as a way to en encourage students to problem solve and really think through a problem. And so we decided to put together a design lab. And um, this slide shows our format, where we, um, which talks about the rhythm of, of the, the lab itself. So. We use uh, design principles, um, design thinking principles, and um, they're highlighted here. So first week we got students to really empathize about the problem. Um, we had them brainstorm um, some ideas. We had them narrow down a problem statement, um, get together and ideate some solutions, and then um, create a, a, a prototype. Now we were doing all of this virtually, so, so a prototype was a, it was a virtual prototype, and we'll talk more about that in a second. So next slide, please. So empathize, what did we do for that? So um, we did something called Quick Talks, where um, we um, were able to um, get uh, actual donors and uh, organ donors and recipients, as well as um, Dr. Chaco, who, who really talked about her experience in social media, and then Dr. Bongo, who really talked about his his work in, um, in actually doing uh, organ transplants and some of the members of his team, um, they, they gave us really quick uh, five or 10 minute talks about their experiences. And it gave the students who were participating in the lab an opportunity to really hear from the people who were being impacted um, by these things directly. And it was really impactful. We also introduced the idea of facilitators and travelers because we were working with um, breakout rooms. So, Ordinarily, a design lab would happen in a big room with tables, right, where people can walk around and talk to each other. So the way that we got around this, this Zoom format was uh, introducing the idea of travelers, where um, some of us were, were going in and out of rooms, and we were trying to condition the students that if someone pops into your room, you don't have to stop what you're doing, but um, just kind of acknowledge that they're there. And it, we tried to set the intention that um, people would be popping in and out. So next slide, please. Um, so we used Miro, as Veronica mentioned, as um, our virtual whiteboard, and um, we created a space um, within Miro where students could could do the the session. So we were in the Zoom room, and then we also had a link to a Miro board. We created uh, spaces on the board for each team to brainstorm within. Right. So we created some structure for the brainstorming. We had empty boxes where we asked them to come up with ideas. But we really gave them the ability to to um, be creative within that space. And I think what was really exciting about this was watching the Miro board as we were running the session and seeing all the cool things that they were doing live. Right. So that was was really fun. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, and then um, the other thing that we did was we had a general problem statement that we came in with, right? And that was how might we use social media to create beneficial patient donor partnerships? But then what we wanted to, students to do is to narrow down the problem statement and really think about what their point of view was. So during the empathy phase, um, what did they connect with? Did they connect with a particular issue that a recipient might have or that a potential living donor might have? Or were they thinking about it from the perspective of a medical professional or, or from the social media point of view? So we gave them all of those options and then we asked them as a team to really narrow down that general statement to something that really spoke to them. And we gave them this, uh, this almost Mad Lib template that Veronica created um, where they could um, fill that in and really give them a structure for how to create a problem statement. And this was all done on the Miro board. Next slide, please. And then um, we also, um, once they, they narrowed down their problem statement, we had them ideate, right? So first we had them do a little bit of research of what else, what else is out there, right? So they were all in front of their computers. They were able to use their web browsers and really look at um, what else is out there in terms of social media, in terms of um, how living donors um, get connected with potential recipients. And then we had them ideate and really think about um, all right, with the, within your problem statement, what are some ideas that you might have? We introduced the idea of constraints, right? So we had them brainstorm, um, and then we had them think in a, in a more constrained way. And we also introduced them to the idea of yes and, which is a, um, uh, an improv technique, right? So instead of saying yes but to an idea, we, we had them say yes and, and it encouraged more thinking. Next slide, please. And then finally, um, the prototype phase, right? So um, again, ordinarily in a design thinking session, um, students would be at tables and we would have them um, work with materials or, or markers or pens or something very tactile. And um, that's something we weren't able to do in this, in this uh, virtual format. But what we did was we created a, um, a virtual prototyping space. So each uh, team on their Miro board had access to um, this this virtual space where they had icons and different stickers and um, and and we just tried to encourage them to be creative and gave them some tools to think about it. So rather than working with rubber bands and and glue, um, they were working with with virtual type tools. Um, we we also introduced them to the idea of scene prop role, right? So. Um, if as they're thinking about their solution, um, where would they imagine this solution occur, uh, occurring? Um, what props, what, what things would they need to make that solution happen? And then um, who, who are the, um, what are the roles that they would have to play to make their idea happen? And so we were really trying to get them to think um, in, a, in a virtual way um, what, to, what their solution was. Next slide, please. And so um, over the course of the lab, we were able to, within two and a half hours, uh, really um, come up with some amazing ideas. Um, we were also in being able to introduce our students to um, a bunch of different uh, design mindsets and methods, right? So um, brainstorming, generating ideas, constraints, prototyping, um, and so we really, really let students know that not only did you really spend some time thinking about this space, but um, these are all the things that you learned. And um, as, as you're thinking about um, what we just told you, um, it might be interesting to think, are any of these things useful to your own teaching um, or problem solving that you're doing with your own groups? Um, next so slide. Before, so maybe before we go to the next slide, since I didn't realize I wasn't sharing, do you mind if we go back and show the playbook? Yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, so sorry about that for um, not having this shared uh, before, but this is all that you saw and heard about that Sunita discussed. We also designed a playbook for the back end of us so that we knew how we were going to interact and how we were going to move through this so that the student's experience was seamless, that they could just come and interact and focus on the task at hand with it and to minimize hopefully, you know, technical issues or, you know, what do I do next type of things. And so we really worked together to identify when we decide on those quick talks, okay, how long are they gonna have? We built in a breakout, break um, in between the chats because we had a lot of speakers and didn't wanna have students just sitting too long without any activity. 
And so throughout the whole thing, we thought of like, what are we trying to get the students to do? And then um, created this playbook to see where how we might, you know, fit this all into a three hour space. And so it was a really interesting way to both um, think about designing with that end in mind, our goal for getting through all these tasks, but being able to allow for um, improvisation and things to kind of go where they may during the thing. So having this structured you know, piece on the back end really allowed us to um, really take things on the fly if we wanted to. And then I'll come back down to the last slide, Sabina. Yeah, so, um, so first before I, I, I finish up with this last slide, um, I wanted to mention that um, this whole idea of, of running these virtual design sessions came from my experience at Stanford University's design school um, where I was a participant in a teaching and learning workshop uh, two years ago, um, fortunately in person um, in 2019. And um, as an alum of that program, um, have been really able to take advantage of a lot of the innovations that um, Stanford's design school has put out. And I think we've taken what um, I was able to learn and really made it our own here at Rutgers and um, are able to engage in these types of multi um, cross interdisciplinary and um, participatory um, design sessions that we hope will yield, um, will not only provide a really great learning experience for students or any participants, but also allow us to move a project forward, right? So where are we going with this? Um, we just talked today about, about the design lab and we don't have, we didn't have time to share with you all the, the really cool solutions that are teams came up with, but um, there were some really good ideas that came out of, of what we did. Um, and so we want to do something with that, right? So not just it being this really great experience, but um, what are the outcomes? So this summer, we are going to be, um, as part of the IDEA program, we're going to be sponsoring a team of students that are going to be pursuing um, this project, right? And um, we have some ideas to start with. Um, the students will be working uh, with us in the IDEA program, but also interacting with with Drs. Bongo and Dr. Chaco to um, uh, as mentors, right? So we'll be moving the project forward. We have some funding for them, um, and then we hope that um, by the end of the summer, we'll have something for them to actually develop. And we'll be doing um, partnering with the Honors College uh, here to um, put them into an innovation incubator, which we call Innovation Lab. And we're hoping that hopefully in the next um, year, we'll be able to actually develop a prototype of something, of some kind of app or um, uh, interactive tool that we can use to match um, individuals that, that um, want to help with individuals that need help. Um, Mary, and is there anything that you'd like to add before we... Uh, I, I just wanted to sort of jump in and say um, how positive the response was from the students who were involved. I think we've all heard from the students since this is um it was like this sort of explosive short-term brainstorming session that they had never really taken part in anything quite like it neither had i from my point of view and um i was overwhelmed by the um, number of specific interesting ideas that arose from like the donor match websites to uh, social media uh, kinds of platforms to apps you know just all kinds of really sort of things that i couldn't imagine would have been generated in two hours. But the students said the same thing back to me, that they were, they left it really um, sort of, you know, refreshed and excited about thinking about these ideas. And it's something that they all said that they wanted to do more of. I think it's also interesting to mention, we had um, many more students wanted to sign up for this than we even had space for. I think we initially had, I think about 40 to 45 spots for students but we might have had even double that amount of applicants had we kept the um, application links open as long as we could have because the uh, the response was great too. So on the front end and on the back end, students' response to me was, you know, um, really kind of supercharged. Just wanted to add, you know, inherent to this whole project is really the, the spirit of collaboration and it was no small feat getting this together and, and managing all the moving parts. So. Really, all the credit goes to Sunita and Veronica for uh, facilitating the session while we were having it. Um, it, uh, it turned out it exceeded all of our expectations. And, and like Dr. Chaco said, the, the students had a very positive experience as well. Yeah, thanks. I mean, um, it's a really good point. We had about 50 participants. We had students. We had all of us. We had 
um, organ donors and recipients and, and medical professionals all in a space for two and a half hours on a Saturday. Um, it was an amazing experience. I remember kind of almost not wanting to click out of the Zoom call because it was, even though it was exhausted, um, it was great. So um, we're looking forward to continuing our partnership. Um, we hope that um, this is useful in, in terms of uh, creating a, um, a platform for, for collaboration and problem solving and also um, following up with, with actual outcomes. So I think we'll stop here. Thank you. Let's see, any questions? I mean, one of the things, I guess, for a few minutes are, you know, what are the, what are the directions that we might um, want to to pursue going forward, right? So we had some ideas of, of um, creating um, connections between um, recipients and donors, right? So um, bringing in experts to help us with with coding and 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 other pieces. So part of the collaboration that we we were able to create um, also exposed to us the need for um, other expertise that we'd want to bring in to the fold. And I think that's also very exciting. I like how the IDEA program really um, allows for this kind of growth. It allows for um, collaborators and people from different points of view to kind of come together at the table and, um, and, and work side by side with students. That's to me what's so exciting. We're not talking to them. They're not, you know, just sitting, you know, at a, at a distance, but we're really all kind of rolling up our sleeves and working together. And it can expand to include, a, you know, any number of partners. So we're uh, really excited to see the directions that this goes in. And it was, it's a pretty complicated topic and it's really remarkable, um, you know, how the design lab helped focus students towards pretty meaningful solutions. You know, this is something that they may not have had a lot of experience with before, you know, from the healthcare side or even just knowing about the problem. But the, the structure of the lab is such that it allows, uh, you know, the students and participants to really understand the problem. And, uh, and like I said, come up with meaningful solutions. So, you know, the exciting part is going to be the second half of this project um, where we we try to implement some of those solutions that were come up with from the students themselves. Yeah. And while we did it in um, a three hour time frame for the lab, I could also see doing this as part folded into a, a semester long course too, and that it doesn't have to be, you know, it could be the project that they work on or looking at things that can be part, um, part of the natural discovery of a student's learning in a course too, I think. And indeed, it's going to be um, integrated into a fall course at the Honors College, the Innovation Lab, as Sunita had mentioned. And um, and we did, you know, have different populations of students involved here. We had graduate students from the School of Communication Information. We had medical students. We had Honors College students and other students at Rutgers. So we've got this, you know, sort of like multidimensional student group that's also um, going to be working on this going forward. So it looks like we're um, we're out of time. But so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for joining us, um, and thank you guys for presenting. That was a really awesome presentation.